What's up guys, welcome to part 5 of our Movidius tutorial series and part 2 of our mobile SSD model. And in this one we're going to pick up where we left off and transfer all that code from Jupyter into a Python file so we can run this model in a loop, display the boxes just like you see here. So let's get started. So before we get into it, I just want to mention that I had a little bit of a hiccup while recording this video. So while I was transferring the NCS from my computer to the Raspberry Pi, I actually dropped it and something must have came loose because there's some rattling sound and the stick just doesn't work. I plug it into the Raspberry Pi to the VM, it's just not detected. So I had to get another one and I've got that one so we can continue with the video. But in the meantime, I'm I've contacted Intel and I'm trying to see if they'll honor the warranty and send me another one. Haven't heard anything back yet, but if they do, what I'll do is I'll do a giveaway. So stay tuned for that. One lucky person is going to win a Movidius NCS if Intel honors it. So hopefully they do. But anyways, let's get into the code. So the next thing to do is move from Jupyter and put all this stuff in a normal Python file. So that way we can run it in a loop and process images from our webcam. So I'm going to open up Atom. I'm in the mobile SSD directory and I'm just going to create a new file. Um, let's call it uh, webcam.py and let's start transferring all this code into a Python file. So first thing I'm going to do is paste all the code from the notebook into our Python file. So here's all that code. And I'm going to remove all the matplotlib stuff because we're going to be using OpenCV for our plotting. So this code can go. And the next thing I'm going to do is instead of reading from an image, we're going to be reading from our webcam. So we can get rid of this uh, mread and replace it with, um, well, we'll create our capture device. So we'll call it capture. It's going to be cv2.video capture. And we just pass a zero to read from our default webcam. Next thing, I need to read one frame just so I can get this height and width. So to do that, we're going to do underscore um, image. And the underscore means it's going to be something we don't care about, kind of like throwing it away. But then we're going to do capture.read. So this will give us our image. We can get the height and width. So now what I want to do is create a while loop. So we'll be running in a while loop, getting frames from the camera and processing them. So the while loop is going to start right here. We need to pre-process, load the image to the um, graph, all that stuff. So from here on, I'm just going to copy it, tab it over, and we'll do while true. So what we need to do now is display the image in an open CV window. So right after the for loop, we'll do cv2.mshow and the window we'll call it frame and we're going to display the image. Now we just need to add our boilerplate open CV code. So you've probably seen this a bunch of times, but if cv2 wait key one um, and zero xf f you know, this is the one. So if we hit the Q key, it kills the window. Then finally, what I also need to do is once we break out of the while loop, we'll add this stuff here, capture.release, cv2, destroy all windows. And then the last one is device, close device. So once we're done, we just close our NCS. So this should work. So I'm just going to pull up a terminal. I'm in my directory with this file and let's just call uh, python3 webcam.py and I spelled graph wrong so let's fix that oops forgot the g let's try again oops and forgot to save third time no image called shape am I connected I'm not connected. So make sure your webcam is connected. Cool, and it's working. Um, it's, all right, we're displaying an image, but looks like we're not displaying it in a loop. So what did we do wrong here? 
Oh, we forgot to actually read from the camera. So let's do that real quick. So underscore um, image is equal to um, capture dot read. So I think that should work. Let's try again. All right, now it's working. So yeah, we're detecting a bottle. This one's the TV. The label's probably off the screen. If I move it up, probably see the label for it. Yeah, TV monitor. Cool, so it's basically working. Now what I want to do is just sort of clean it up, give it colors, um, make it so the label stays underneath here, and um, do that check to see if we get any NANs. So let's go ahead and do that. So to add some colors, I'm just gonna come right here, right below input size, and I'm gonna start by doing um, mp.random.seed, dot dot actually dot seed, just so we get the same colors every time. And just pick a number, it really doesn't matter what you pick. Next thing I'm gonna define something called colors. This is gonna be equal to, um, well, it's gonna be 255 times mp.random.rand and we can just pass it a shape that we want. So we want it to be the length of, oops, classes by three. So this will give us a list of tuples or a list of lists that are, um, you know, three, so RGB, and then the number of them will be the length of classes. So that'll be our colors. Next, what we wanna do is um, come down to here and right below here, we, we will define what we'll call color. And color is going to be colors. And then we're just going to pass this, this quantity here. So we'll pass that in. And then here, instead of green, we'll just do color. And here, instead of green, we'll do color. And this line is a little thick, so I'm gonna make it a two. And this probably can also be a two. And since our image is a little small, let's reduce this um, text size to a uh, 0.8. Cool, let's go ahead and run that, see what that looks like. All right, so we're getting some colors. The text looks a little bit more normal. And now what I wanna do is fix this, um, the text going off the screen. So it's something that was done in the pi image example. So I'm just gonna copy that code. So let's kill this window. And then the way they did it was right below the label. Well, yeah, let's just come down here right after we add the rectangle. We're gonna define something called y. And y is gonna be equal to y1 minus five. And if y1 is um, so if y1 minus 15 is greater than 15 else y1 plus 18 so this is basically an if else statement oops just written in one line so basically y is going to be equal to this if um if y minus 15 is greater than 15 so basically if it clips and the the label or Y is going like off the screen, we're just going to bring it back down and shift it. So here, instead of um, this, this Y1, we're just gonna pass Y. So this is gonna be the starting location. And actually, this can just be X1. So let's try that out, see what it looks like now. See if the TV label, oops, and yeah, there's no need for that. Cool, let's try this again. Oh, forgot to save. All right, cool, so we're getting the label like right here. It's not clipping off the screen. All right, so the next thing I wanna do is add that check that checks to see if we get any NANs. So basically if output, if any of these outputs give us a NAN, we just wanna skip that box or skip that frame. So they did it 
Well, in the pie image search, they did it one way. It was this long, if this or this or this or any of these things have a NAN in it, we continue. So I'm just gonna shorten it by doing if not mp dot is finite. So is finite will return true if there's a NAN or no, sorry, false if there's a NAN. So that way, if not, so then if we detect one, we can, we will detect it and we'll continue. But basically what we're gonna do is sum output and then we wanna take the output of i plus one to i plus seven. So this basically checks um, output over this like short range of values. And what sum does is instead of a list where it's like true, false, true, false, um, depending on if there's a NAN or not, some will just take, um, it'll just sum up to, if, well, basically if there's any NAN in there, it will sum to false, or if there's any falses in there, it'll sum to false. Um, it might be a little confusing, but you know, always check these things out using Jupyter or just the command line and just to see how they work. But anyways, if we, if, if not this, then we just continue. Sorry if that was a little confusing, but trust me, it works. So that is going to be our check to see if we get any um, NANs in there. And finally, what I want to do is just time everything. So let's import time and right at the start of the while loop we'll do s time is equal to time dot time and i'm just going to add a print statement to print out the fps so right down here right after we display it i'll add a little print statement that prints out the fps so now let's go ahead and run this to see what kind of speed we're getting all right, let's move this over here. So we're getting about 10 frames per second. It's kind of going back and forth between nine and 10. So this is a lot better than the tiny YOLO model. That one was only getting like four, four and a half frames per second on the virtual machine. Whereas this one we're getting 10. So it's more than double the speed. So I think this code is pretty good the way it is. It's a little rough. I mean, there's ways we could clean it up and tidy it up and all that stuff. But for now, I think it's good. So last thing I wanna do is run this on the Rock 64 and the Raspberry Pi, just to see what speed we're getting on those two devices. All right, first up is the Raspberry Pi. So I've started up a VNC session. I'm gonna pull up a terminal. And I'm just right here in the mobile SSD folder. And I've already gone ahead and transferred the folder onto both Raspberry Pi and Rock64. So to run it, it's just Python3 webcam.py. So now let's go ahead and run it, see what we get. Cool, so let me just move this over here. So we're detecting both bottles. It thinks the cat is a person, but it's not super confident in it. And the other things it's not detecting. And actually it's not detecting the monitor. Let me just play with it a little bit to get that. Ah, there we go. So yeah, oh, well, it's a little buggy with the monitor. Cool, we're detecting like three to four objects. So not too bad. And we're getting about six, fam six frames per second. So one thing to note, this is using just a USB webcam. Um, I need to test this with the Pi Cam still. The only thing is I don't have a good mount for it yet, so it's kind of hard to hold it so that way it's, you know, still on a on a scene. Um, once I get a mount, I'll go ahead and rerun this with the Pi Cam, but I have done some quick tests and it does increase the speed by about half a frame per second. So with the Pi Cam, I think we're getting closer to seven frames per second which is pretty good compared to the like 1.4 frames per second we were getting with Tiny Yolo. So that's the performance on the Raspberry Pi. Now let's go ahead and check what we get on Rock 64. All right, now let's go ahead and test this on the Rock 64. So I've started up a VNC session. I'm on my Rock 64 desktop. Let's pull open a terminal. I'm already in the mobile SSD folder and we'll run the same command, python3 webcam.py. And let's see what kind of speed we get.
All right, we're detecting about the same, yeah, the same objects. Let me go ahead and move this over. And yeah, we're detecting both bottles and it's double detecting the TV monitor. But this time we're getting about 8.5 frames per second. So compared to Raspberry Pi where we were getting about 6.2 frames per second, again, the Rock 64 is about 30, 35% faster, which is consistent with what we saw in the tiny YOLO model. And now, just for fun, what I've done is plug the Movidius NCS into a normal USB 2 port on the Rock 64 just to see the speed difference between USB 3 versus USB 2. So I've gone ahead and done that. Let's go ahead and run the same command, see what the change is. And it looks like, yeah, there is a little bit of a drop. So we're losing about one frame per second. Um, yeah, we're getting... Yeah, about 7.5, 7.4. So there is a noticeable difference between USB 2 and USB 3 on Rock 64. But we are still getting a faster speed compared to Raspberry Pi. So that's likely due to the CPU. I think the CPU on Rock 64 is a little bit, a little bit more um, optimized or better performing than Raspberry Pi. Or it could be the RAM. I'm really not sure. But even on USB 2, we're getting a little bit a little bit more speed than Raspberry Pi. And this is the first time I've done this, so uh, this is all new to me. So kind of cool, um, but yeah. So that's gonna do it for this video. I'll go ahead and post the webcam.py file and the graph to my GitHub page, just so you have access to it. But I highly recommend you go and download that proto.txt file and the cafe model and compile it into a graph, just so you get familiar with how that works. And also go ahead and check out that Pi Image Search tutorial page. There's a lot of good information and a lot of good other tutorials on there. So in the next one, I'm not really sure what we'll do. Maybe we'll look at some other example models on the Movidius page or on the TensorFlow examples folder. But yeah, if you have any suggestions, feel free to leave them below. If you've got any questions, like always, leave them below. And if you liked the video, leave a like. If you really liked it, hit the subscribe button. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.